All right, safety systems at Japan's nuclear power plants kicked in automatically as the earthquake hit. But at one nuclear power plant, the quake disabled the reactor's cooling system. 3,000 people in the vicinity have been evacuated. This is in Miyagi Prefecture. The government said the plant is going to release some radioactive vapor in an attempt to reduce the pressure in the reactor. Well, our next guest can explain how this serious situation might affect the surrounding area and what it means. We, find, we have with us via telephone Seth Gray. He is the president and chief executive of Lightbridge Corporation. This is a nuclear energy consulting firm, and it also consults on the construction of nuclear power generation. Seth Gray, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Can you tell us what you know about this particular plant and what operation or procedure might actually relieve the pressure inside the reactor? How, how key is this move? Right. Well, we, we do know a great deal about the plant, and people in our company ha have been there and actually inspected the plant when they were with the IAEA. And basically what is happening is that the earthquake knocked out electrical power to the plant off the grid. All four of the coolant pumps that circulate water into the core of the reactor failed. The backup auxiliary generators failed. And they're surviving on battery power, which must be just about at the end of its life now. So what they're trying to do is two things. One is, in a controlled way, release small amounts of radioactive steam through filters, up a stack, uh, into the environment in small enough quantities and at times given wind direction, et cetera, so that it should not have an effect on the environment or human health, although there's obviously a limit to how much they can do that before they trip over that line. And secondly, they're setting up three uh, sources of auxiliary power that the U.S. Air Force has helped deliver in the form of emergency generators and I believe also batteries, and they should have a fourth on the site soon, and they're running some cables to the plant right now. So hopefully that will work that will get the pumps working uh put cooler water into the reactor taking out the hotter water that is in there and, and end the situation at least that's how they're trying to handle it now in, in talking about the four cooling pumps that uh, failed seth gray how common event is that this should not happen ever it should not have happened today um, this sounds to me like some sort of a common mode failure or some problem that was common throughout the backup systems that should have been truly independent and redundant so that you wouldn't have a failure like this all at once. And I'm sure that investigations will turn up exactly what the issue is. But this exact situation has not happened before. Now, we're working with an earthquake at an 8.9 that hasn't happened in Japan at that level either. But the plant was designed to withstand such an earthquake. So this should not have happened. Seth, uh, in 30 seconds, the dependency of Japan on nuclear power for its electricity generation. About a third of the country's power comes from nuclear. About 18 or 20 percent of that is now offline. How long-term an effect could this, may, this have on the country? Well, it depends. This reactor, I would suspect, will be offline for a year. There are three identical reactors at the site that were shut down for maintenance, and they'll come back online soon. They were turned off throughout the whole thing. Um, so it depends on how much damage was done at other plants. But if they do lose um, several of those plants for a few months, it can have a significant effect on Japan's economy and trip through there. There will be effects on factories being shut down, slowing down Japan's production. Uh, there can be effects on commodity prices. Uh, th th this can have a pretty serious effect. All right. I want to thank you very much, uh, Seth Gray. He is the president and chief executive officer of Lightbridge, a nuclear energy consulting company.